This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skin. What is going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, a few weeks ago, I had shown you running Purple Hash Monster on my M5 stack, and guess what? Today, we've got another amazing project with the M5. Now, for such an amazing product, it's really unfortunate that a lot of these projects have kind of died. Like, Hash Monster was updated like three years ago at this point. Well, that's where community member The Other One came in. It took me a while to figure out the lead speak on that one. But um, yeah, he came in and created a brand new project. He coined Evil M5. Now, Evil M5 isn't simply just an evil portal. There's so many more cool things you can do with it. Now, if you've never heard of Evil Portal before, basically what you're doing is creating an access point that people connect to for one reason or another. And then when they get to that page, it displays something that asks you for credentials or information, you know, stuff you might not normally give out to anybody on the internet. Well, Evil M5 project actually takes it one step further because what it actually allows you to do is to clone access points and then try to actually force a computer to connect to them. It also has probe sniffing and attacking, which is really cool, and its own web server that you connect to remotely and actually read the information off the SD card without even actually having the device on you. Man, I love community projects, and this one's a banger. Let's get right at it. All right, so first things first, we're gonna hop on over to the desktop. We're gonna go to GitHub and check out the repository for this project. All right, so here we are on the desktop. Let's pull up GitHub right here. And this is the other one's Evil M5 Core 2 project. Now this project was originally made for the M5 Core 2, but we did find out that it works perfectly fine on the M5 stack fire that I have as well. He's got a great little write up on pretty much how everything works and what the attacks do and effectively how to install it. But I'm gonna show you how to install it as well. So first things first, what we're gonna do is just downloading it, just like we always do, go to download zip. We're gonna save this thing right on over to the desktop and cool, cool, cool. All right, so let's hop on down here and just gonna go ahead and extract all. There we go, easy, easy, easy. Of course it opens in the wrong window, always does, but here are our file. We're gonna size this, and then if we open this file, we see the files that we need here. So here is an INO file that we're gonna open in Arduino IDE, my nemesis, and we also have SD card files. So these files need to get copied to the SD card. So let's go ahead and start that. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is actually pop the SD card out of the M5 stack like this. Boom, whoop, eh, out and then we're gonna plug that into our computer. Then we're also gonna take our M5 and then plug that into the USB, but the USB that's actually on the head unit, not the one in the base here, because the base is just gonna charge it. Go ahead, plug that in, boom, and that's ready to go. Now we're ready to transfer our files, but I know what you're thinking, what if I don't have an M5 stack? Well, that brings us to today's sponsor, PCBWay. Now, PCBWay is your one-stop shop for almost anything you need when it comes to creating. We have got some really cool projects coming up and we're gonna be using PCBWay to make those projects happen. PCBWay can help you design and create PCBs of almost any type. Well, now you've got a PCB, but say you need a screen or something for it, guess what? PCB's module store has got you covered. You've got a device, now it needs a case. Well, PCBWay can help you design and 3D print a case for almost anything. In a bit of a creative rut, well, guess what? PCBWay's got pre-made projects that you can just select from. They have projects from handheld gaming devices, battery chargers, pet feeders, and more, just waiting to be made. So head on down to PCBWay.com and check out all the amazing resources they have for you. Thanks again for all the continued support from PCBWay, and let's get back at it. All right, so we've got the M5 plugged into our PC. We've got our SD card plugged into our PC. Now we're ready to transfer files, so let's get back to the desktop. All right, we're back here now. We can open this back up. We're gonna go into the SD card files and just copy all of these copy and we're just going to go ahead and drop those onto my evil m5 which is importantly enough to remember this is a fat 32 there we go file system on here very important so we're going to take that drop these entire folders right over here bing bang and we're done all right so now what we're going to do is pop over to the main folder we're going to open up evil m5 core 2 in arduino ide my least favorite program of all time double click here and we're loading now it is gonna say that it wants to move my sketch folder, no problem, just press OK, and it will open up properly. Now I already have my M5 stack selected right here, but all you really gotta do to install that is go to, not sketchbook, where are we at, boards manager, search for M5 stack, and you can install the M5 boards from here. We do also need to make sure we have the correct libraries, 
So we need the M5 Unified Library, which is obviously already installed. Once we confirm we've got all that going, all we gotta do is click upload and give it some time. So, time to wait. After these messages, we'll be right back. And just like that, we're done. Super simple, super easy, anybody can do it. This is one of the things I really do like about these M5 products, is that they're so easy to work for. Really no, you know, not much compiling, not like making apps and stuff for Flipper or hacking with Flipper. Uh, everything on the M5 seems to be super, super easy. So yeah, let's check this thing out. All right, so we're ready to go, but just don't forget to put your SD card back in. So we're gonna take this, it always, it goes in kind of upside down looking. Get that in there, give it the old click. Make sure it clicks. Ugh, there we go. And now we're ready to go. All right, here we are. Awesome, awesome. Let's fire it up and take a look. Here we go. And... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, sweet. Here we go. It's the evil M5. Let's adjust the exposure so we can actually see what's going on. All right, so that's better. So yeah, we can go ahead and see all these cool options we have. So let's first start by scanning Wi-Fi. Click scan on the middle button. Let's go. Scan in progress. Doo -doo -doo. You see me in the reflection over here. Scan complete, and then we can select network. So I've created, of course, my little Squatch network. Networks. We're going to connect to SquatchNet. Eh, middle button, and then we can clone that. So it's going to show the information for that access point. So we can click clone, and it's going to clone SquatchNet. Super cool. So what we'll do from there is start the captive portal, just like normal. So boom, boom, boom. What's kind of fun about this is you can actually change the captive portal while it's running. So right now I have Holy Portal and Normal. I'm gonna run Normal for now. And there we go, Normal selected, cool. So let's go over to the PC and see what's going on. All right, so here we are on the desktop. So we're gonna go ahead and connect to SquatchNet. It's called SquatchNet 2 because I've been testing this a lot, but that's gonna open up our page right here. And it's like, oh, your box has some issues. Please enter your Wi-Fi password to reset. Now, obviously, we know this is, you know, us trying to get through figuring out what the Wi-Fi password is, but you know, it's again, it's, this is just a proof of concept. It's not the most convincing of pages, but it shows off exactly what this is trying to do, which is super cool. All right, so moving on. One of the things you can do is actually check credentials that you've farmed already with the portal. Right now, you know, we don't have any credentials because we haven't actually farmed anything, but that's okay. Now, one of the other things that you can do in here, among other, like tons of other stuff, is actually go through and do a probe attack. What a probe attack is gonna do is send a ton of probe frames directly at the router. If the router doesn't know it's being attacked, basically it's gonna flood its own network with all the, um, you know, information coming back and forth from the probes. Basically, it'll effectively cut out that Wi-Fi. So so that's pretty fun too. One of the other cool things you can do is the karma attack. So what the karma attack does is basically it emulates a Wi-Fi hotspot, but it tries to make it more enticing for a device to connect to it. So you could actually get a device that was connected to a Wi-Fi. It'll see the karma attack network and then it will actually want to attach to that one. So then we can drop our evil portal that way as well. What a cool idea. Now, actually, as I was filming, the other one actually dropped a brand new portal. So we're gonna change the portal. We're gonna to go to Rickroll. Let's see what Rickroll does. We're gonna start that. Make sure our portal is running. Boom. Squatchnet deployed. Let's see what this does. Let's back over to the desktop. All right, back on down to the desktop. So let us connect to Squatchnet 2. Connect, and let's see what happens. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, that's actually really cool. This is running in an evil portal. I actually haven't seen this done before. Um, I'm sure, I mean, it's possible that somebody else did it and I haven't seen it, but I haven't seen it before and that's really cool. We can message our Rick Roller. You got me. <laughs> Send. Very cool. So that's Evil M5 by the other one. Are there any other features you'd like to see added to Evil M5? Because I know the author of this is very receptive. So any questions or any comments or any, you know, recommendations, Leave them down below. I knew as soon as I saw the M5 stack that I love this platform. ESP32s are one of my favorite chipsets. They're super, super useful. And there's so many cool things you can do with these. If anybody else knows any cool M5 stack projects, please let me know and we'll take a look at them in the future. But for now, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. It helps me out a ton. You guys are the best. We'll catch you next time.